Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Tim Man's Corner channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tim Man Taylor, and today I'll be reacting to another Mr. Nightmare video for you guys. And it's three disturbing true library horror stories. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn the lights off, move the camera up here for you guys, and let's get this reaction on the road and in the bag. All right, folks, here we go. When I was in university, I would take six courses every semester because I was doing a dual degree, and I wanted to get it all done in four years. This meant a lot of semesters. I was up to my neck and ears in homework and studying all the time. My university had a library that was open until midnight. I can tell you for one thing right now is that I don't miss them days where we had to take books home or something just to study and then go back. Yeah, I hated them days doing a lot of essays and stuff. But anyway, nothing compared to what he's doing. But let's get back to the video, shall we? I was also interning this semester, so I really had almost no time to do my work. I still lived on campus at this point, and my suite mates could be very loud and distracting sometimes. This was a Wednesday night, so I had three classes that day and my internship. I also had two exams the following day, so right after I finished up at my internship, I went straight to the library. Our campus library was very big. When I got there at 9 p.m., there was still a decent amount of people everywhere, but from 9 to 10, it quiets down a lot, and I was planning on being there until 12, studying for my two exams the next day. Around 11, most people were gone, but there were still some around. I was sitting at one of the tables sandwiched between two bookshelves on either side, so it was a little more private and secluded where I was sitting. Less distractions. Right. By 11 o'clock, some guy who looked to be in his upper 20s came into the section and passed one of the multiple empty tables and came to mine, where he sat down diagonally across from me at the table. I looked up, and he looked back at me and smiled as he was sitting. All right, at that point, I'll be like, can I help you, sir? <laughs> I mean, like, I don't want to be rude, but out of all the tables they got in the library, you could have picked another one. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's continue the video. Setting his books down, I looked back down and just tried to focus on my studying and not wonder too much why he decided to sit at my table. I was going through the slides to study on my laptop when the guy at my table said, excuse me, then asked me if I by chance was taking a specific economics course. I politely told him no, sorry, hoping that would be the end of it. But then he started explaining why he asked that, because his quote-unquote professor is a bitch and gives pop quizzes every day. Oh. I said, wow, that really sucks. Then I tried to go back to studying. Mentally, my mind wasn't completely into the material anymore now. Now I was distracted by the presence of this man, who I had a feeling was going to keep trying to talk to me. I looked up from my laptop screen and saw that man looking at me, smiling with his lips. I looked back down at my laptop, contemplating getting up and moving elsewhere, or just leaving. He then asked my name. I made up a name and said, Chelsea. He said, you have such blue eyes, Chelsea. This was when I started to wonder if this man was really here to study or creep on women. The fact that he looked like he was almost 30 didn't help. I asked him what the name of his economics professor was. He took a second, then said, Professor Davis. No, he's probably there to creep on you. And he just came up with that name just so he won't be sus that suspicious. But <laughs> it ain't helping, dude, if you keep on smiling at her. <sighs> Nervous some people. <laughs> I asked if he knew the first name. He shook his head no. I went straight to RateMyProfessor.com and looked up any professors with the last name Davis at our school. And only one came up a calculus professor whose last reviews were left years ago. I decided to get up and go ask the security worker at the front door for help. As I got up, I felt the stare of that man at the table watching me walk over to the security worker and tell him that this man was creeping me out and I don't think he's a student. The security worker walked back over with me and asked to see the man's student ID. He started looking through his wallet, then his pockets, and then he said he must have left it at his dorm. The security worker then asked what dorm building he's in. The guy was clearly lying because he didn't know what to say and eventually just said, I honestly don't remember what it's called. The security worker walked him out of the library and he came back and told me to just be careful while walking back to my dorm. 
I thanked him. The whole rest of the time at the library, my mind Thanks. was so distracted just thinking about what a creep that guy was. Yeah, he was a creep. But thank you, security guard, for getting him out of there. Lord have mercy. I mean, if he don't have no ID, that tells you he don't even belong there. <laughs> I did my best to keep studying. And around 12, I knew it was time to wrap it up so I could get some sleep. I packed up and left through the same way the security guard escorted that man out. He wasn't standing there at that moment. I don't know where he went. I started walking through the basically deserted campus. No one walks around that late on a Monday to Wednesday night. That's why eventually, when I was nearing my dorm building, and I heard at least one loud sound of a shoe hitting the concrete behind me, I turned around, but I saw no one there. I knew for a fact I heard a footstep, though. I started to run now which may have been a mistake, because the second I started to run, which was made more difficult because of my backpack, I heard running footsteps behind me. It's that guy. I turned and saw that man from the yep. library sprinting towards me. He's trying I to get you. I screamed at the top of my lungs, but only for a second before I was tackled to the ground and had a hand over my mouth. He kept threatening me, saying, you better shut up or I'll kill you. I genuinely thought my life was about to oh, end. Oh, he's a I was trying to call psychopath. out for help still, but it was muffled by his hand. He then got to his feet and started to drag me by the throat out of sight of the main walkways. And I saw he was dragging me in the direction of the woods right by the dorms. I managed to remove his hand from my mouth for just long enough to scream again. It was enough to get the attention of these two guys who came running over yelling, Hey, stop at my kidnapper. The man let go of me and started running off towards the woods. The two guys came over to me, and I'm sure they were asking me if I was okay and whatnot. And I blocked all noise out for a few moments. I was in total shock. I completely let my emotions out and started bawling my eyes out. The two guys called university police, and I did my best to keep myself together and explain. We went to the library to ask the security worker for his description of the man as well. It matched my description of the man. The police were also able to use the footage from the library cameras to get a clear picture of the man's face. The picture was sent out to all students' phones and emails and the school website, and that same night, there was an anonymous tip that the man was at a late-night dive bar down the road from school. The police arrived to the bar and arrested him. The level of trauma this induced on me was incredible. I can't even imagine the trauma for those who weren't as lucky as me in situations like this. Well, I'm glad that uh, you were able to scream for help and uh, that guy let go of you. And also, thank God the cops were able to find him. But yeah, if you didn't do nothing, he probably would have grabbed you and... Did God knows what, but yeah, like you said, he's not only a stalker, but he's a perv and a potential killer because he said he would kill her. Mm. But yeah, after I heard him say that they put his face up through like student phones and everything, there would be no place for him to hide now. <laughs> but anyway, again, I'm glad they got him, but let's get to story number two. We moved to a new town when I was seven. Any memories before that move I consider to be very early childhood, and a lot of those memories are blurry at this point. This is one of those memories. This happened at some age before seven, I know that. If I had to guess, I was five, maybe six. There was the local town library that our mom would always take my brothers and I to. It was a few blocks away, actually. I remember this one day, it was my mom and my little brother, who was a toddler at this point, we started the day at the mall, probably spent hours there tagging along with our mom shopping. Whenever we'd go to this mall, she'd always bring us to the McDonald's inside the mall to get us ice cream cones. Oh, that sounds nice. I remember we got ice cream on this particular day, because on the way to the library... I remember I used to get ice cream over at McDonald's too, but I hardly ask for it now over there anymore. I usually go, go to Wendy's, I usually ask for Frosty. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. After leaving the mall, I still had some of the comb left in my hand. We arrived to the library, and there was this kid's computer section that my mom would let me stay at and play computer games while she went and did whatever she'd do. When I got bored of playing whatever old online computer games there were at the time, I got up and started walking through the aisles of books in the kid's section of the library, looking for the I Spy books. The kid's section was in the far corner of the library, and while I was walking from aisle to aisle, I heard a psst from behind me. Oh, no. Uh-uh. No. 
don't go near that uh, voice. And I was about to say that I remember them I Spy books when I was younger. Be like, try to, it kind of trains my brain a little bit. Be like, where, where's the item? <laughs> and then you finally see it. But then also hearing a pss noise. No. Uh, if you don't know that person, don't go near him. Please don't. Okay. I turned around and saw nothing. I was looking at the back wall of the library, which had another shelf of books leaning on it. Then I saw half of a grown man's face peer around the shelf and said, Peekaboo. I remember laughing and feeling no sense of danger. He did it again. He went back behind the shelf, then peered out his head again and said, Peekaboo. Again, I laughed. He asked me what I was looking for, and I said the I spy books. He said he'll help me find it. He came over and took my hand and started leading me through the aisles, leading us, I guess, to the section of books that began with the letter I. And there they were, at least five I spy books next to each other. I grabbed my favorite one, the treasure hunt one, and he said, let's go sit down and play. He led me to a table in the corner by a couple children's computers, and we started looking through the pictures. This went on for some time, and he was asking me questions about myself as we played I spy question that still sticks out to me the most is who are you here with and I told him my mom and little brother at some point after this he said something implying that there's a kids playroom downstairs no and I at that age never knew that there was a downstairs to the library he said we could take the book down there he led me to the door that led to the basement of the library no kid your parents should have told you about the stranger danger and you said you didn't know there was a basement. I, it's just probably a basement basement. It ain't no playhouse or nothing down there like he was saying. Oh. He's probably either a pedophile or a kidnapper. One of the two. But anyway, let's continue. Which, for reference, is actually where events and meetings for certain clubs and organizations are held. Oh. And there is actually a little playroom down there, I guess for parents who have to bring their kids with them during any of the meetings. The man led me to that little playroom. There were various toys in there, most notably a Lego set and a Lego table, and then there were a bunch of chairs. He set the I Spy book down on the Lego table. This is where things get really uncomfortable thinking back on. As he was trying to forcibly get me to play with the toys, I started to get uncomfortable. And around this time, over the loudspeaker... A female librarian said into the intercom, Will Liam come to the front, please? Your mother is looking for you. At this time, the man went to turn off the lights in the room, and now it was pitch black inside. He said in the dark, We're going to play hide and seek. No. This was the first moment I was genuinely freaked out, and I started to yell for my mom. I remember he kept telling me to be quiet, and his voice was getting louder as he was getting closer to me in the dark, until he had his hands on me. I thankfully managed to run past him and out the door of that room. And I ran down the dark hallway back to the stairs. And as I was running up the stairs, I had that same childhood feeling of running up the basement stairs after turning off the lights only 100 times worse. Because I genuinely was scared I was going to be grabbed. I made it back to the floor of the library and ran straight to the front desk calling for my mom. She was at the front desk with a group of librarians. And I remember the relief on my mom's face when she saw me. I told her there was some man who took me downstairs, and she literally lost it. The next thing I remember from there was a bunch of police in the building searching around, but I never saw that man again. He must have exited the building through a different way. I remember speaking to some woman who was probably with the police, asking me very delicate questions. I never really asked my mom about this experience that many times, because it's very uncomfortable, and I'd rather just not think of it. I'm glad you're... Mom went to the librarian and told the librarian to get over the intercom to look for you. But then it, w it would be scary if the guy just got up and turned the lights off and trying to play hide and seek my foot. You know, he was trying to scare you to death. God knows what he would have done if you didn't think clearly to go up the stairs. But I'm surprised that guy did not get caught. I hope he did later, but if he didn't, man, mm. He's probably doing the same thing again to somebody else. But um, he probably found an emergency exit or something to get out and quick before the cops got there. But 
Yeah, if uh, somebody was doing that to my kid, I'd be like, like if they're doing the whole peekaboo stuff, I'd be like, what are you doing? But uh, you, yeah, you just can't trust people in the library, it seems like nowadays. But anyway, let's get to the story number three. I used to work at the local public library when I was in my early 20s. I'd work the night shifts as my second job at least three times a week after my first job. I'd get there at six and would work till closing time at nine. I would also be the one to lock up the place after closing, but I wouldn't just leave right after the library would close. I'd have to shut off all the computers, do some cleaning and organizing, stock the shelves with all the returned books and DVDs from the day, take out the garbage, and only then could I leave. It was a Friday night, approaching closing time. Most of the other library staff was gone already. It was just myself and one of the female librarians left. I had made a couple last call announcements to the remaining library patrons, alerting them that the library would be closing soon. You know, I thought about it uh, at one time, maybe applying for, you know, stocking books at the library or something, but I, I never even gave it a second thought now. I, I'll talk about it a little bit more when we get towards the end. But anyway, let's continue. I was already cleaning up the place, trying to finish up early so I could leave and just start my weekend. The only other employee still there said goodbye to me as soon as the clock struck 9 o'clock. I announced on the intercom that the library was closed. The two guests that were left got up from their tables and started packing up their things before leaving through the door. After that, when I saw no one else in the building, I locked the front door. I proceeded to start fixing all the chairs to be neatly tucked under their tables. Then I started emptying all the garbage cans. And when it was time to bring them outside to the dumpster on the side, I unlocked the front door again and brought them out. It was quiet outside. The library was kind of tucked away from any main roads. When I came back inside, I locked the door again. Now all I had to do was restock all the returned books and DVDs from the day. I grabbed the two boxes and started with the DVDs, which was easier since the DVD section was smaller. It took about five to ten minutes. During this time, I thought for sure I heard something come from one of the book aisles. I started walking through the aisles till I found an open book laying on the floor, which had clearly just fallen off the shelf. I put it back in its place, and for a second I stood there and just wondered, how could that have happened? I went back to work, and after finishing the DVDs, I took the box of books and started putting them one by one back on the shelves. Going in alphabetical order, I started with the A's. The books in the box were sorted in alphabetical order to make it easy. As I worked my way down the shelves, trying to bang this out and go home, I heard another noise nearby. What? Two times in less than 20 minutes. That was no coincidence. Somebody's in there. I down and started walking through the aisles of books again. I found another two books on the ground in another aisle. Someone was in here. I walked out to the open area with all the tables and such and yelled out, excuse me, the library is closed. There was silence until I heard something from across the library, from the children's section. I approached the noises and it started to sound like some rabid animal making growling sounds. I also heard books being thrown onto the floor. It was coming from one aisle. As I built up the courage to peek down the aisle, I saw some woman wearing a nightgown throwing random books off the shelf, making these disgusting animal-like sounds. I didn't say anything. This is a mental patient? I turned and ran to the office where we had the phone. I didn't have a cell phone at this time. I locked the office door and closed the blinds to the window. Then I called 911. I reported that there was some sickly woman in the library, and I think they should send an ambulance. They asked if I had approached the woman, and I said no, she looked like she could be dangerous. When the operator asked me if the woman was still in the same spot, I opened the blinds, and I screamed because that woman was right on the other side of the glass, looking in. Oh, the no. Was so big that she looked demonic. I said to the operator, she's right outside the office. The woman started to bang on the glass, screaming gibberish. She tried opening the door, and when it... I'll be having a heart attack if I <laughs> saw somebody looking in the window. Ooh. Didn't open. She turned around and sat on a chair facing the office. The operator asked me to keep the blind open and watch her. The woman was wobbly as she sat down, 
so I noted she was definitely high out of her mind. Two police cars and an ambulance showed up to the library. The woman was put in handcuffs because she tried fighting the police officers, but nothing she was saying made any sense. She was put in the back of an ambulance and was taken away. I never found out what the hell she was on. I don't know how she got inside. Maybe while I was taking the garbage out. Or maybe she was inside before I even locked the place up. Either way, it definitely made being in the library alone after closing pretty unsettling from there on out. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't blame you, dude. Huh? Working the night shift and then this crazy person starts to show up. <laughs> oh, no, I probably wouldn't handle it. I'd probably be like uh, either carrying pepper spray with me next time if something like that ever happens again or find another job. Now, I was saying earlier that uh, I was thinking about working at a library before, but I now just listen to all these stories right here. I'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's going to be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications for more Mr. Nightmare content like this. This has been another successful installment of the Tin Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor. I say that's a wrap, and have a nice day, buddy.